Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against mystery of Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 363. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake. I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hey, guys. Is anybody else ready for August to be over? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. I, about the, the end of August, I start getting so tired of the hot weather. And um, I praise God because we're getting rain today and we need it in the Ozarks. We've got several bouts of it, but um, we're still behind. So we're thankful yeah. for the rain that we're getting. And Well, at least it's cooling down, too. I mean, our August started about... Yeah. June 15th this yeah, year. Yeah, and it, we're supposed to have a cool the rest of this week or cooler and then the next week too. So that's a good indicator that maybe we're going to have some good fall temperatures. And I love that. I love the fall, the temperatures, and when the uh, leaves start turning. It's beautiful here in the Ozarks if you've never seen it. If we, if we get rain, sometimes you don't get enough rain, it just turns brown. <laughs> but if you, all the hills are so pretty when they've got all the different colors in them. Well, there's a lot going on in there, sweetie. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, understatement of the year. <laughs> understatement of the year. Uh, I, I have never seen such political theater uh, go on in my life, and as well as what I, what I deem as, uh, and I think many others are deeming as, as abuse of political and, and legal power. Yeah, I read a um, headline today that said the DOJ is trying to cover up mar lago raid because it politically backfires. And that's, I was kind of interesting to hear that because I, I told Mike this last, last week, I said, I keep hearing uh, the Holy Spirit say backfire, that it's going to backfire. And so then I heard, uh, I was going through uh, some teachings and heard that a, a prophet say that he had heard that and other prophets were calling him and saying they were getting the same thing. So that's a good thing when you have a lot of people hearing the same thing because um, this there's, there's setting precedents that are very dangerous. Oh, absolutely. This, you know, this breaks a 150-year precedent. I, I saw another article, too, um, headline that said that uh, there are agents of the FBI that have gone and are whistleblowing on what happened. And so, you know, it's real important that we pray every day and ask God to forgive the sins of all those in the FBI, NSA, uh, the CIA, because then that will break a cult power that's flowing through those organizations. There's there's good agents in everything. And so we've just got, a lot of them won't even be saved. And so I've been praying here lately that God would just supernaturally protect them. Because when you come against this evil empire I'm always talking about, which this is all a part of, when you come against it, I mean, the threat level's through the roof. And, I mean, they've, they've got everything um, at their disposal to use to stop somebody that is interfering with what they're doing. But it's, it's apparent to me, and it probably is to you guys too, they're kind of overplaying their hand. They have been for a long time. I think they're desperate. I think that they know that, that something's getting ready to change. I think that they're, you know, behind the scenes, we don't even know what all they're seeing. They may be seeing God thwart every uh, thing that the evil people are planning. Yeah. You know, they may they, their desperation has probably come from a lot more than we're hearing about because in the background, they may be just being confused and confounded over and over and over and can't even figure out what's going on. Well, it's because God's getting ready to come on the scene. He's getting ready to deal with this evil. You know, and, and some of the um, hypocrisy of it, prior to this last election, every election, the Democrats would say that, you know, hey, there's, 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 we need to have better security with our elections, that the thing is being hacked and blah, blah, blah. I mean, every single election until this last one, okay? Now, well, you know, in fact, the one before that, they said, you know, Russia hacked the election. Now the ha election is unhackable. Mary, they're trying to see if they can get laws passed to make it illegal. You violate a crime if you ever question mm -hmm. an election. Well, and I, I thought mean, it that, was that's a, what happened in the old Soviet Union. I thought it was a good indicator at, at the and let's see, today's Tuesday, so they'll be having the uh, primaries in uh, Wyoming and another state. But they, but there are a lot of the people that have questioned the election that are getting the are getting nominated as you know for their their party. And so that to me, that's, that's showing the deep state that's showing that the people are saying, Hey, there's something wrong with this. And that, that's what it's going to take. 
And that's what we're going to talk about today is, um, you know, and there's patterns in the Bible of uh, God's people getting bondage, and then God raises up to a remnant and or someone to lead the remnant, and then, then he comes on the scene. And that's that's where I believe we're at. And, and you know, the things are always rough in August. Sometimes it'll be like the worst. It's always been a horrible month for me. Uh, now I can pray through it. But years ago, I didn't even know what was going on. But I just hated August. I hated that that month because it was just terrible in one way or another. And then, and I think that the enemy really puts a lot of focus on it to get you discouraged, try to get you to give up because you're getting ready to go into the fall feast season, which, which typically has an anointing all its own that God moves so specifically during those feast times. And so I think that's what we're seeing now is just, you know, the yuckiness of, of what the enemy's doing. Um, But I, I, I know that the, that the remnant, is getting fired up. They That's are. you know there may be a whole bunch of, of Christians that are just saying, "Hey, there's no sense in fighting." You know, this just end time prophecy. We just got to, but the remnant will be fired up. They're going to be the ones um, that are not going to cower. They're not going to retreat, but they're going to say, "Now's the time to stand up for God and His kingdom." You know, I I think one of the things that you know I've looked at uh, some of the position people are taking in Bible prophecy. Well, you know, this stuff has to happen, and 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 we know that absolutely that one one thousand percent it's right now, and so let's just roll over and and just let the devil rub our belly or something. You know, it's just it's crazy. Number one, historically, the body of Christ has been wrong countless times on the returning of God, returning of Jesus. Uh, in fact, they were they were super convinced of it at the at the at the turn of going into the second millennium after Christ. Uh, you know, after the year 1000 and uh, over and over again. And yes, we are closer than we have ever been. But you know, this, what, what if it, what if it was another 30, 40 years for the Lord comes back? Nowhere in scripture does it ever tell us when you see these things happen, just give up. We're to occupy till he comes. We're to be salt and light in the earth until he comes. And one of the things that uh, that I found in my research, Mary, and, and L.A. has already has confirmed this in, in his research, is the elite have been planning a fake tribulation period. It's part of, the, part of their brainstorming and their planning because, number one, it will throw all the pre-tribbers off if we go into what appears to be the tribulation period and nothing happens. Jesus doesn't come back. You get to the end of that seven years, and it's, it's almost like the tribulation period, but it's not like it. And... It's enough that a lot of prophecy people are, are saying, oh, well, this is it, this is it, this is it. That at the end of it, it's not Jesus that comes back. It's the, actually the beginning of the great delusion when the UFOs show up and the watchers show up and the next thing you know, the Antichrist is coming up and completely discredits the body of Christ. That's a part of their planning. They know Bible prophecy better than most of the church does. And so they're, they're looking at at co-opting a lot of this to use it against us. This, this is why when, uh, when, when the Reformers, uh, during the time of the Reformation, they had, they had several different models. You know, everybody knows about Sola Scriptoris, only Scripture, uh, and, and different things. But one of the ones that people miss is Testimonium Spiritus Sancti. What that means is it's the balance of the Word and the, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That, it's, if you just, it, that unless... You begin really listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying. You don't know how to properly apply, especially prophetic scripture. Mm-hmm. And and that's why that we need to listen to what the Spirit of God is saying and not just be strictly, well, you know, in, in my estimation, because I'm using my brain power and I perceive that we are here uh, in prophecy, the Apostle Paul said we're looking through a glass darkly, okay? And how many times has the church over and over again said, this is it, are we going to be like those in Thessalonica that sell all our stuff and we're wandering around in fields and white robes because we're convinced that Jesus is coming back and we end up being nuisances in town? And finally, the Apostle Paul had to write them and say, listen, go back to work. If you don't work, you don't eat. Okay. Uh, Jesus is going to come back when he's going to come back. Our job is to be salt and light in the earth. Our job is to stand up for righteousness. And in every and a lot in the scripture you're going to bring in Isaiah, and there's been there are many other things. There's a time of God judging. One of the things that uh, God told me about as as we were looking at a lot of this, and, and 
over the last couple of years, he said, he said, how bad is it going to get for the remnant to wake up? Now, he didn't say everybody to wake up, but for the remnant to wake up, he says, how bad is it going to get? How much of my judgment, how much am, am I going to have to judge? How much am I going to have to allow the enemy to do that, not to kick them out of their slumber that they're so uncomfortable? And it's like God, and what I, what I was sensing in my spirit, and see if this agrees with you, that God wasn't waiting for everybody to wake up. He said, listen, I need my remnant to wake up. And so I'm going to let these things happen until enough of my people wake up that they begin to be the resistance to to affect the change that I need, mm-hmm. and I th- I think that I think that that is is where we're at because you see, it's like God is doing some things, and it's going to be like it's almost like utter destruction. The remnant raise up and they begin repenting and doing all the things they're supposed to do, and it's almost like in Nineveh, you know, Nineveh repented. What it, what that did is that kicked the can down the road a little bit more. And I, I think that we we're I think that every generation has a has a chance of kicking the can down the road a little bit more. That's what God talked to us about this temporal loop that He's doing because He knew what the remnant was going to do. Mm-hmm. But I I think this thing of us just rolling over and saying, "Well, end time prophecy is end time prophecy." There's not a thing we're going to do. They're not listening to the Holy Spirit. They're just perceiving it. It's almost like a cop out okay, there's nothing that I can do. I'm just going to sit down and do nothing. That's the opposite of what everything that the Word of God instructs us to do. That's right. Well, years ago, um, God had given me a list of nine judgments that were coming, and he was going to judge the educational system. And if there was ever a a time that it needs to be judged, it's now, because it's just got increasingly worse through the years. You know, back when, when I was in school, it wasn't as bad although I think they were starting to sl- obviously slide the things in. But, but now it's ridiculous what, what people are being taught. And, and the secular uh, colleges have caused many young people to turn away from God. Yes, on purpose. And, and so, so this has been part of the agenda. And um, God took me to Isaiah 10. I'm going to start in verse 20. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The word stay there means depend. And and if you'll think about where we are right now, everyone's depended on the government. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone depends. That's why everybody's, you know, thinks if everything falls apart, the government's going to be there because there'll be, uh, you know, funds and they'll they'll provide food. and that. Well, in the disasters we've had, that's not been so apparent. <laughs> when you look at their overall plan, if let's say if the prophecy does hit the fan, they're all going underground and letting us bite for ourselves. I mean, that's part of the, the plans of the continuity of government. So part of what God is doing, I believe, in this, in this season is he is – showing us what's there to give us a chance to change from depending yes. on the government to totally dependent on him. In verse 21 it says, The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the midst of all the land. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, O my people that dwell us in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. For yet a little while, and the indignation shall cease in mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There's an anointing coming, and I yes. believe this fall feast is going to carry a special anointing that is going to come against our modern-day Assyrians absolutely. that have absolutely take us, taken us into bondage, absolutely taken us off the mark, absolutely got us in a place where we're, most people are just beside themselves thinking, well, they're going to, you know, there's no hope, there's nothing can be done. Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> yes, there is, and God's waiting on us. When, when, you, when, when you look at historically at this, the Assyrians are the ones who basically, if you will, invented using fear and terrorism to control the people, mm-hmm. as well as I mean, where, even where they were marching, they would they would project that terror so that armies would surrender before they ever got there. 
So those that oppress, look, you know, when, you, when you set this back in context of the Scripture, those that oppress using terrorism and fear, and right now fear is the currency of Mystery Babylon. It is. It totally is. That, that's, how, that's how the media control us. Mm-hmm. That, that's how politicians control us. They, they're constantly using fear. And it, it's like the very ones, this, this whole thing about government has always just really, um, in, in the last few years, when I'm really looking at it, the ones who created the mess. Why do we have no jobs in America? Because they shipped them on over to China. Well, who shipped them over to China? The very ones who say they're going to fix it now mm-hmm. and gave tax incentives to move the stuff over there that not only moved our jobs over there, but created a powerful nation who has the financial resources that are now buying the politicians that moved all the stuff over there. Guys, government, while we have to wait, while we have to vote and we have to be involved in government to be salt and light in the earth, we also need to realize the place of government. The, the early uh, f- framers of the Constitution saw the necessity of government, but also saw the possible evils that government can do. That's why the Constitution ensures our freedom and limits the government. And because our trust is not in the government. The, right. the, very, the Bill of Rights and everything starts out with, it is God who. It is God who gives mm-hmm. these things. That's right. And we've got to set things in priority that we, ha- we can't trust in government because they they have they have gone crazy, but the Bible says the government shall be upon his Jesus shoulders, and we That's need right. to begin trusting in him. That's what we've got to do, because throughout history God's always preserved a remnant from among His people, and they serve as a lighthouse in the midst of a dark and sinful world. And boy, are we in the midst of a dark and sinful world! I mean, never in my lifetime could I have even imagined that we would get to this point. But look, the the turnaround has already started. Yes. The turnaround's already started with, to in my opinion, uh, Roe versus Wade. That was something that, that was looked so impossible. Yeah. Um, but look, that God did it. And in his orchestration, that only he could have done. I mean, uh, unimaginable what he's had to do to get that that accomplished but now we've got we're we're on that you know we've got the ball rolling let's just keep up the momentum let's let's pray like we've never prayed you know i get up every morning father um protect these whistleblowers protect the people that are speaking the truth you know even if they're not saved if they speak the truth i believe there are angels that will surround them to guard the truth Mm mm-hmm and, you know, years ago when God was telling me how he was going to turn everything around, as he said, the ground will pop open and reveal the truth. They'll think things are hidden that can, ne- can never be revealed. But see, God sees where they put everything. God sees every evil thing that was done. They may be um, lives that were, were destroyed that nobody even knows about, never heard about. God's getting ready to reveal it. He's going to reveal it as his people start declaring, we forbid it. We're not going to have this kind of evil in this nation. This nation's meant for God to use. Yes. And we can stand up and take our authority and say, stop now in Jesus' name. This, that's what we started doing with the abortion. Yes, we did. We started saying we forbid abortion to continue, the murder of innocent babies in the womb. And look, God's God's kingdom works with that. He orchestrates with what we say. You know, I don't believe that um, that we can command angels. There are a lot of people that think that you, no. you can just tell them what to do. I believe that when it says in the word that they heed the voice of God's word, as we speak God's word, as we speak what God's word says is good and evil and stand on that the angels will go and work accordingly yeah we've got a line with heaven and speak what the that's father's it. speaking that's and it. they do it you can't just speak anything and think that the angels are going to go they go when you speak the truth of god's word you know i'm looking at the the some of the notes that you printed out and one of them it shares in earlier in in isaiah 10 in verses 17 and 18 and this this is this is the job of the remnant the light of Israel has become a fire and their holy one a flame. In a single day it will burn and consume his thorns and his briars. Now listen, if the anointing is on us, then we have, what does oil do? Oil burns. It's the job of the remnant 
to catch the fire of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that fire burns off the thorns and all the stuff that the enemy has put around us to keep us in bondage. That's what's coming. It's the anointing and the fire. That's it. That's it. And, you know, one of the the greatest examples of a remnant was the Maccabees. Yes. You talk about an a empire they were coming against, but God backed them up. He backed them up. And I'm telling you, it's a fire that God's getting ready to send. And it will be a consuming fire over evil. It's, but it will be a light and, and a salvation fire to those that, that love Jesus. Well, look, look at the situation of the Maccabees, okay? They could not keep. Antiochus Epiphanes out of Judea. Okay, they did not have the military strength to do that. Then they lost a lot of their people with the atrocities that he did. That but was with, the, with the Maccabees, righteous indignation rose up, mm-hmm. and the Holy Spirit anointed it. That's it. And when the Holy Spirit anoints it, fewer can drive out a greater power. What they couldn't do before, now even less numbers can do. It's almost like Gideon with, you know, he he got kept on reducing, reducing, reducing. But it's the anointing. It's the anointing of God when it comes on the rim that begins to change absolutely everything. And that's where we are in this point in history is that God is getting ready to anoint, and it's our job, just like with with, uh, Elijah at Mount Carmel, Set the altar in order. Set mm-hmm. it in order. It's our job to prepare for That's the it. fire and to seek the fire of God. And when the fire and the anointing mix, it burns up. It's almost like Meshach, right. Shadrach, and Abednego when they're in the fiery furnace. Everything that held them in bondage burned off. That's what we're getting ready to see. And, and the remnant always goes first. The yes. remnant leads the way because they wake up to the truth of the situation they're in. They wake up to the truth that man... It looks hopeless. We're, we're so outnumbered. We're so out, uh, you know, they have all this technology today. And you think, well, who could fight against technology? I have had tones come in my ear that I knew were, were sent. And in a minute, I'd say the blood of Jesus, and it would stop. Yes. Now, if that was, you know, just ringing in the ears or something, <laughs> you could say, and that isn't going to do anything. No. But, I'm, but, I, but technology can be overridden by Almighty God. See, he flung this place into existence. The only reason they've been able to do with technology what what they've done is because all of the mechanisms that God created, the kingdom of darkness knew about and has given them insight so they could do this. You think God can't outdo it? He knows the exact way that everything is done in the universe. He has already historically done that. We, we, no, we think of it as in the days of Noah. In the antediluvian age, they had more technology than we do now. They had, they had greater technology that first world nations like America, Russia, and there, there is an archaeological drive to find antediluvian technology that's beyond what we have right now, okay? That, I mean, the pyramids and ley lines, all this stuff is all connected, and that's how they controlled and darkened the minds of men. They're trying to use satellites and different things now. Noah... In the midst of that technological empire of the watchers was able to stay true to God, build an ark without them stopping him, and be ready for judgment without them stopping him, and there wasn't a thing they could do because there was an anointing of God on it because he found favor in the sight of God. That's it. And, And you know they were making fun of him, but he just kept on persevering. And I'm sure that they were thinking about that as they were drowning. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to rain. Uh, it's not. We've. It's never rained before. You know, people are saying, "Listen, I've never seen God move like you're talking about seeing Him move." Well, just wait just a little bit because it's coming. Yeah, there's it's fire coming. coming. There's fire coming. The fire. Holy of God. fire. Holy fire That's on right. His people. And anything that anybody's seen before that they thought was a big deal is not going to look big compared to this, because God's God's had it. Yes, He's had it with all that they've done. And I'm telling you, when they when they start messing with babies. When they started taking little children and torturing them for their purposes, God paid attention. Yes. And he's getting ready to turn things around that are not supposed to be able to be turned around. We're, we're getting ready to go into a Mount Carmel time. We're getting ready to go into a Babylon where they were, where God wrote on, on the wall. Because all these different times throughout history and redemptive history, God got to a place 
where he said, I've had enough. And the remnant would raise up. Yes. And he would use them, no matter how small, to override it. You know, it, it would look like if you thought, oh, my word, you know, right now, the, it doesn't look so great even with the military because some of these military generals, oh, my word. They're communists. You, yes, they are. And so when you think about that's in charge of the military, but listen, there there's an older bunch of military guys that aren't communists. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they, they love this nation. They, they put their lives on the line. And I believe with all of my heart, God will use them. Absolutely. I, and I, I do believe, you know, I, I didn't put a lot of stock in anything the Q thing did. I just thought, nah, they, no, nobody ever tells you what they're going to do, you know. And they would say, oh, this person's been arrested. And this person. I thought that was, I just didn't put any stock in it. I would listened to it for a while. And I thought, nah. But I will tell you this. <laughs> I believe God's going to do something so miraculous. I think we're going to see people that are tried for treason that really committed treason. Yes. There are people that sold secrets to China. It's going to be tried in a court of law. If you look at how many of our politicians, their kids are either either connected to Ukraine or connected to China. That's a little coincidence, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's overwhelming. And, guys... We, we have, in, in our country, you know, when you look at when they originally founded that they would pledge their lives, their wealth, and their sacred honor. Uh, we have lost the concept of sacred honor. But it's going to be discovered once again in the mm -hmm. remnant. Well, and there's, there's a lot of people in the military right now. Um, a lot of them, you know, have refused to take the vaccine. And so watch what God does. Yes. He will always back up righteousness. Yes. There's a day coming when there's going to be the son of perdition, shows up on the scene, going to set up this, this world government. We don't have to be a part of that. Why is the, the Bible mentioned sheep nations? We could, we could have a remnant rise up. There should be, could be such revival and salvation sweep this land and power of God moving like nothing everybody's ever seen that we can be a place to go and save those that are being persecuted. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times when, when the Bible says whole world, it doesn't necessarily mean whole world like we're talking about. It's talking about spheres of influence. The Bible said that the whole world knew of Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, China didn't know about him. The Indians over here in America didn't know about him, but it was that sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus was very succinct, even though the, the influence of the whole world following after the Antichrist, he said, when I come back, there are sheep nations, the ones who didn't follow the Antichrist. Well, and, and there's, they've, got to, they've got to be places in these nations yes. that can reteach what the educational system has lied about. Yeah, because it's indoctrination anymore. It is. It's not education. No, it's not education. And it is, they have used occult means to sway these kids in schools. Yes. It's occult means. It's not just teaching. It's an occult backing to influence. Yes. It's and, like and, witchcraft. And putting pressure. I mean, there, there have been kids that have almost been... Uh, suspended permanently from school because they refuse to go with the agenda. They refuse, you know, I'm a guy. I'm always going to be a guy, or I'm this or whatever, whatever the agenda is. They they have been uh, victimized mm -hmm. by the educational system and by their teachers because you won't submit and you won't do this. Well, God's getting ready to judge that system. Yes. He is. There's a lot of things he's getting ready to judge. And uh, what's what the result is going to be is – that witchcraft influence is going to break. The fire that's coming is going to make it flee. Yes. <laughs> they cannot stand again. I'm telling you, the kingdom of darkness is worried because they haven't seen something like this for a long, long time. They know it's coming. They've, they're seeing something in the spirit realm most of us can't see. And they're trying everything they can to do to stop it to the place to where, you know, now they want to um, prosecute anybody that doesn't believe that that election was real. Yeah. Well, so, we would have to look like idiots 
with everything that's gone on, with everything that, that we've all heard, if you listen to anything other than the regular media, we would have to be idiots to think that there wasn't a rigged election. Absolutely. And so let's just keep standing for the truth. Let's just keep declaring the word of God, declaring what he's saying. And we declare right now we come into agreement with every other prophetic voice that is saying everything they do is going to backfire. Yes. It's going to backfire. It's going to turn on them. Yes. Everything that they've done that they used to get by with with ease and just sit back and, you know, have their heroin and cocaine parties and just think, oh, nobody can stop us. They're getting ready to see the hand of God, and they've never seen it. <laughs> yeah. Haman's about to find his noose. This, the, the fowler that has set the traps are going to fall into their own mm-hmm. traps. They're going to, all, all throughout the Psalms, Father, let them fall into pits that they have dug for me. Let them, all these different things over and over again, that when God begins to move, and see why we need the fire. They use the thorns and the thistles, and it talks about here in Isaiah 10, as ways of controlling you. Mm. Okay, these, these are ways of hedging you in and controlling you. God is saying, when the fire comes, what I release in you will devour what they put around you to control you. Mm-hmm. Because the only thing that's supposed to control us is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. That's right, and then there has to be a learning center. Yes. There has to be a place to retrain what has been defiled. Yes. God's word has been defiled. His house has been defiled. Yeah. And so we've we've got to be, that's what I think this conference center is. It's going to be retraining. It's going to be a place where when we do what God tells us to do, the shackles are just going to fall off of people. God's already told yeah. me things to do at the, the conference, and uh, I'm not dare going to mention them but, uh, because Satan would try to work and, and make that harder. But I'm telling you, I, I know what's getting ready to come. And we, we've just got to keep standing for the truth. And as the remnant stands, God will back it up. He will back up what the remnant are, are standing. And, and we've got to have the remnant has got to have their doors covered. Yes. You can't be in sin. You can't be, you know, having these big gaping doors open in areas of your life that aren't sanctified because the enemy will will stop you. But yeah. if you can stand, stand with the, the help of God, with the sanctifying blood of Jesus, and we can stand firm, I'm telling you this thing, will this evil empire is getting ready to come down. Go to the Day of Atonement and count back 45 days, and that's when the season of Teshuvah begins, the season of of. Of, of repentance before God. And uh, if you don't know the history behind that, you know, the first time when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments, he comes down, there's a golden calf. Well, it's this time of year that he goes up the second time. And this time, those, those 40 days that, that he's up there again getting the second set of tablets, this time Israel is getting right before God. They're repenting. They're seeking the face of God. They've learned their lesson. Mary, he comes down on the Day of Atonement. And see, that that's, that's a, a symbolism of the return of Christ, that when Jesus returns, his people aren't following after the golden calf. They're not following no. after their mystery religions. They are repenting. Yeah. They are getting right before him, that they are getting their robes white. That bride's that getting herself ready. <laughs> she's getting herself ready. <laughs> she's she's going to be, you know what they call being decked out to the nines, you know, it is mm-hmm. absolutely stunning. And let me tell you something. From God's perspective, holiness is stunning. The Bible talks about Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. He's coming back for a people that are holy as he is holy, mm-hmm. that have washed their robes. And the, and the book of Revelation, there's two specific things that, that causes the robes to be washed. One is the blood of Jesus, and the other is the righteous acts of the saints. you got to put your feet and your devotion where your mouth is. Well, right now is the time when we've got to take action. We peacefully declare the word of God. Yes. We vote. We do everything legal that we can do, and God will back it up. Yes. We're going to declare what God's going to do, and we're going to see him do it. Absolutely. You know, it's it, it was hard for me to understand what God was doing with this whole thing when uh, the election went the way that it did, and I was, I was praying it. And it became so obvious that you couldn't miss it. He's, he's exposing everything. 
He's exposing it so we can stand and say, this is wrong. This is evil. And we're not going to stand by and not uh, declare it anymore. We're going to declare what it is. And the great judge will overthrow evil courts. Yes. Now, how many times, you know, have I gone back? Jesus took his disciples at Mount Hermon. That's watcher territory. And said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatever you lose. And, he's in, and, he, and people try to say, well, there's no such thing as binding and loosing. In that context, it is, listen, he's saying, church, in the days ahead, you're going to face stuff that the early church didn't face. The early church didn't face watchers. They didn't face the technology and everything else. Jesus was using them to prophesy to us right now. Mm-hmm. He because the watchers are returning. They're already they're already oh, back. They're, they're already here. They're, they're ones, messing with stuff. They're the ones calling the shots <laughs> yeah. right now and giving the technology. And Jesus is saying, "Listen, those gates of hell, the full constituted gates of hell, all re- reunited for the first time since the flood." All of them united, the principalities and powers, the watchers, the Nechesh and the garden, all of them, Lucifer himself, they're all united to do this thing. That full council of the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. But whatever the church, whatever the ecclesia, whatever the ecclesia binds on earth will be bound in heaven. That's it. We need to start making prophetic prophetic declarations of what heaven is saying not what your flesh wants but what heaven is declaring we need to become his voice in the earth to declare righteous words that are anointed by the holy spirit with that prophetic unction and when that begins to happen in mass yeah it's going to change the very atmosphere it will because the truth is is the burdens are going to be taken off your shoulder. The yoke is going to come off your neck. Of these thing, All these things that have happened these last decades have put yokes on us. Yes. They put burdens on us. And so the yoke is getting ready to be destroyed because of the anointing. Yes. And there is a fresh anointing, I don't think, that has been seen in our lifetimes that is getting ready to be released on these feast days. And then God's going to give us instruction to do when we get to that conference. Uh, he's already laying the groundwork, and we're going to see people set free like never before. Absolutely. Not just here, but Mary, I believe, that, I believe, I believe that God <laughs> is raising up ministries all over yes. the United States, all over the world, that are replicating the same thing because there's going to be places to catch fire. Yes. There's going to be places to be trained. There's going to be places where a fresh prophetic anointing is released. And that's not to make them prophets. That's to commission them. The, you know, the prophet came to David and said, God is anointing you to be king. The prophet would come and say, God is anointing you to be a general. God is anointing you to do yeah, this. That's it. There is, when, when, uh, when Habakkuk came, they had tried for 21 years to rebuild the temple and couldn't get it done. But when Habakkuk showed up and he released a prophetic anointing, they had it done in five years, Mary. That's it. It's going to be fast. That which you couldn't do. Without the anointing, you yeah. get her done by God's grace with the anointing. That's exactly right. And and there's the confusion is going to break. Yes. Little kids are not going to be confused anymore. They're going to know exactly who God designed them to be. Absolutely. And so I'm I'm excited about what God's getting ready to do. I don't care how it looks. I I I don't go by what you hear on the news because it's so little of the of the truth. Well, they, you know, it's hand picked and and this and that, and so. We we serve the God of truth. Yeah. Some, sometimes they lie and sometimes they lie through omission. What well, they and don't there's, cover. There's a light, a holy light that is yes. getting ready to shine on this darkness. And when it does, all of the, of the cloaks are going to fade away. And we're going to see exactly what's there and how putrefied it is. Exactly. Guys, that's where we're headed. Mm-hmm. There is going to be... One last great revival, and this is something God put in my heart well before the, even when Trump ran for office, so it's before 2016. He began putting in my heart, Lord, one more time before all this unfolds, one more time, I want you to put the elite on their backs, and I want you to put your foot across their neck and say, I want you to know that I'm Almighty God, yeah. and you're only going to get what you get done with my permission, according to my timing. That's good. And we pray that every soul that's caught in this that can be saved 
be according saved. to God's knowledge of whether they can be saved or not, be saved. We pray that they be saved, that their souls be saved. But for those that cannot, we ask you, Father, to stop them. Don't let them hurt another little child. Don't let them get away with one more thing. Don't let them corrupt laws. Don't let them corrupt times and seasons. Don't let them perpetuate the evil, Father, that they have yeah. done across this nation. Now, Father, over every remnant, Father, whatever briars and whatever thorns the enemy has put within them to keep them up, Father, I prophesy their demise. Father, I prophesy those things are coming down and you're setting your remnant free. And Father, it would do my heart good that everybody that shows up for the conference already have the fire. Mm -hmm. That there was that divine visitation already beginning. Yeah, start it now, Lord. Father, start it now. Start it now all over the world, Father God. Let it catch fire. Father, everyone that listens to this, let the fire of the Holy Spirit begin mm -hmm. to fill them. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit begin to consume everything around them that is holding them back. Father, let them not only have the fire of the Holy Spirit, but Father, a finisher's fire. Father, a fire to finish the race, to get the job done. And to see our callings in God fulfilled and God's purpose is done in the earth. Now, Father, we thank you that the enemy is powerless to stop your fire. He is powerless to stop your will. And, Father, we bind up his efforts and we loose the kingdom to function the way it's supposed to function in the life of every believer. In Jesus' name. In the ancient plains of Shinar, an evil was born. The first world king, the prototype transhuman, the ultimate despot, Nimrod. In Babylon, the son of perdition devised the Shinar Directive, a plan to enslave humanity and make war against the God of Heaven. God's intervention at the Tower of Babel only delayed Nimrod's hellish plans. As the powers of Mystery Babylon gather to create the new Tower of Babel and to prepare for the Son of Perdition's return, Heaven is issuing a clarion call to the Remnant. The Shinar Directive will reveal the strategies of the enemy that will help you untangle yourself from them and become the victorious Church. It is time for the Remnant to wake up, discern the times, and be infused with Heaven's power to withstand the Shinar Directive by Dr. Michael Lake. Get your copy today at kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. Oh, 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 oh,